All right, it's a little bit after 7 o'clock. We're going to start the caucus. Uh, we have a huge agenda tonight to get through. Um, historic marker presentation by Dave Smith. Oh, I'm on already? Yes, you are. You're sure it is. You were there. Talk as long as you want. Dave Smith, 320 North Main Street, Colin. Uh, before I even talk about the marker, I want to commend the village and especially the streets department on the good care they're taking of our roads in this rough winter. I live on North Main Street. I see them going by three snow plows of bricks. So boy, they clean it real well. So it's been a rough winter, but they're doing a great job with it. Uh, I'm representing the Poland Historical Society. I'm the historical marker chairman. But I would like to introduce Mr. Larry Bachman, who is the president of the Poland Historical Society. And Ted Heinemann, many of you know, he's a trustee of the Historical Society. <clears throat> Just to give you an update on where we are with historical markers, uh, you might be aware that we're kind of on a campaign to dedicate more historical markers in our historic village and township. We did one for William McKinley two years ago up there at the former boyhood home, uh, and we <coughs> did one last September on the village green, recognizing the village green, the old graveyard, and the Presbyterian church, which dates back to 1802. We now have five markers total in the village of Poland. There are 40 in Mahoning County. One of our rival communities has 14. It's not like we're trying to have a race with them. <laughs> but we think we ought to be able to do as well as they're doing, or at least close to it. Uh, <clears throat> at a recent meeting of the uh, Poland Township trustees, Larry and I attended, and we approached them about a, a new marker that we're proposing for this year which would be placed at the Little Red Schoolhouse. And we find with these markers, you get more bang for your buck if you put different text on each side rather than the same text on both sides. So that marker on one side will talk about the Little Red Schoolhouse going back to 1858 when it was built. The other side will talk about how Poland Township was formed and the fact that Poland Center, that intersection of 224 and Struthers Road, there was an actual community there one time with church, stores, the school of course, cemetery still there. So we're putting, uh, these guys and I are writing it, we're putting the finish, finishing touches on that marker. Uh, the deadline is July the 1st in Columbus to the Ohio Historical Connection, they call themselves now, to get that approved. So we're hoping that that one gets approved. We, we always apply for a $750 grant, but those are normally given for markers that indicate something on a more national level. For example, we did get it for McKinley's marker because he was a president of the United States. We didn't get it last year for the village green. Uh, so that, that marker we would hope to get approved and dedicate in the fall sometime, on a nice fall day, out at the Little Red Schoolhouse. We're going to approach the Poland School Board <coughs> later this month at one of their meetings to ask permission to put the marker on their property. Because as you may know, the Little Red Schoolhouse and the Poland Historical Society, we lease that property from the Poland School District for the great price of one dollar a year. But uh, we do have to go ask for permission to put it on this property. Then in 2016, <coughs> as you I think are aware maybe, or me to be, and that is the 150th anniversary of the incorporation of Poland Village. 150 years next year. I have a book over there that was done in 1966 uh, acknowledging the 100th anniversary. We use that book a lot because of the great history that's in it. So we are planning to apply for another marker. We're going to apply this year because the deadline is July 15th. In order to have it here, like it celebrate Poland time next year, which is in June, we want to get it approved this year. That marker would recognize the importance of this building, the Kennedy House, which became Village Hall. Uh, the Stoddard family lived here one time. They had 11 acres. They had a tannery across Yellow Creek here. Uh, some of the slaughtered sons got into the circus business. And I understand from that book that when they tore down the carriage house, I believe it was, they found a skeleton of a monkey back there that didn't survive the winter here in Poland. He was apparently with the circus, I guess. I don't think he came out of Poland Woods. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of the marker uh, will talk about Poland Village and the facts that, it, that it's the 150th anniversary of the incorporation of Poland Village in 1866. And with that book and some other sources we have, we have information about how that happened. If you know, in the old days, people had to go out to Poland Center to vote, even after a village was incorporated for a while. Uh, people, the center was the voting center for the Poland Township. 
So that marker will talk more about the village and the other side will be about village hall. Again, we're going to try to get that in by the July 1st deadline. Uh, we're starting to work on it and have some information gathered. <coughs> we just haven't started writing anything yet. Uh, <coughs> the idea would be that we get it approved this year and they don't make the markers until you pay for them. So at some later date we would pay for it, have it delivered, and then hope to maybe dedicate it as kind of an opening part of Celebrate Poland in 2016. Open up the event. So as you know, there's, there's a cost involved with these markers. Uh, they're about $2,700 if you do different text on both sides. Uh, we've talked to the township trustees about the marker that we're going to put out there. They kind of said, uh, come back to us after you know if you have any other donations, and we're likely going to give you a donation. They haven't committed themselves, but we think they will. Uh, <coughs> any organization or government body that donates a, a substantial amount has their name placed at the bottom of the marker, sponsored by, it always says sponsored by, Ohio Historical Society, which is now a connection, Poland Historical Society, because we write the, uh, the application, and there's room for two others. Last year we only had one other because the Hein Fund sponsored and paid for the entire marker. But if this is something the village would like to get involved in, just trying to plant the seed. We don't need any money yet, but somewhere down the road we're going to be requesting input from you and perhaps other groups. Um, <coughs> just as an aside, this year is also the 150th anniversary of Riverside Cemetery. Ted and I are both trustees at Riverside. We're going to be planning some events to recognize that. We are just talking today about doing a bus tour and a walking tour through the cemetery as part of Southern Poland. That's all that I have to report on unless there are any questions. I just wanted to give you an update. Dave, um, the actual grant money that you get from that, you said it was about $750. Mm -hmm. And so then you basically need to raise $2,000. Well, that's if we get the grant. And again, that's if it's of national significance, you're more likely to get a grant. If you we did, the village green, we did so. And they we, more than likely wouldn't look at this. More than likely not, right. unless we could somehow put a national spin on it. You know, we were the first township in the Connecticut Western Reserve to be surveyed. Whether they consider that national importance, I don't know. It just probably depends on how much money they have in Columbus, too. Do you have anybody else that you're uh, targeting for do donations for this particular um, the village hall marker? Village hall marker? No, actually, we're just getting started. Just getting started. Okay. But in the past, like the William McKinley marker, we did have, I think it says at the bottom, uh, Poland citizen groups, because we did have organizations like Streetscapes, Rotary, and a few others that donated. Mm -hmm. Of course, it cost a few hundred dollars each. Right? And we can also put the word out to individuals that might be interested, although we don't put individual names at the bottom of the markers. Of, my historical society doesn't like that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We'll keep in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any items for caucus? We could review budget if you want to do that, or we can do it out of finance. Does somebody else have something they'd like to know? Laura, you want to talk real quick about this stuff, and then we'll do. Uh, sure. I wanted just to let uh, oh, uh, Laura Lafont, 19 Elm Street, Poland. Um, wanted to let council know that uh, the Easter egg hunt, the annual Easter egg hunt, that will be taking place on the 28th of March. It's early this year, so we're hoping the weather cooperates. <laughs> Um, we have the Poland Junior Women's Club has typically been the uh, sponsor of this, but this year we were approached by the uh, I can I remember Church at Five Points uh, New Life New Life, and they wanted to become involved, and they have also done they did, last year they had an Easter egg hunt on the same gate as ours, mm -hmm. and um, the youth pastor there realized that this was going out at the same time and wondered why are we doing two egg hunts, you know, less than a couple of miles apart and trying to draw the straight same crowd. So she really was interested in getting their Easter egg hunt in the middle of Poland if she could possibly do that. So she saw that ours was on the same date as theirs was scheduled for this year and she approached me and said, is there any way we could combine efforts? So we had her come to one of our meetings and she pitched it to us and they have a much bigger event. We usually just have 
behind, and then pretty much is done. It's I don't know if you've ever had little kids and been to it. It's over within 20 minutes. You know, all the eggs are gone, and then we have cookies and cider, and, and the kids hang around for a minute, and then they go home. Um, at New Life, they have um, you know they have face painting, they have balloon animals, they have characters that walk around. I guess there are people dress up as different characters and come out. They get I, they might be getting a fire truck. I know they're getting a police car. To come for the kids to see, they get a, they had a bounce house there, but we kind of talked them out of that because we don't want that's just one more thing we don't want to have to worry about the weather and liability and, and such. Um, we typically had put out 2,000 eggs. They have 7,000 that they already have ready to go. So we couldn't figure out. It, it seemed like a win-win to have them move it here. The only thing we wanted to make sure that it was not there was no religious connotation or or anything. We talked to. Um, Superintendent Janifei, we usually send these flyers home with the kids in their school um, folders, and he said it can't have any kind of church name or anything on it. So they're not listed on these flyers. They are listed as a sponsor or co-sponsor on our website. But if you notice that it's a bigger event, if you come, if you've got kids or grandkids and come, um, it will be from 1 to 3 this year instead of from 1 until 115. <laughs> <laughs> but typically, once the eggs are done, they're done. But this year, at least we have more eggs. We have more for the kids to do. We hope the weather cooperates. Um, it starts at one o'clock, and and the different egg hunting places are, you know, there's some back in the garden, there's some on this front lawn over here, and it's a staggered start time, so we just don't let all the big kids go for little kids to try and eliminate the problems that that causes. So um, we let Paula know. I'm going to leave these also here, so if she gets questions, she knows where to send them to our website or to me if, if people are coming in and asking about it. I just want to let you know. Okay. Anthony, you don't see anything any issues with that? Either? I don't, and especially if the school already you know, thought that through about them. Yeah, we thought, when she came to us, and then she, she gave her pitch, and then she left, and we said, you know, we, that we don't church and state kind of thing. We don't want to make sure that nobody thinks that this is them trying to recruit members and we talked to her and she said no no absolutely not and um, we just want to have they just want to have a bigger hunt that more people could come to and, and more so than the separation of church and state just to make sure that we don't offend any of the other you know um, churches in the area when right it's advertised it's not going to be anything about you know new life right it's just going to be a Easter egg hunt yeah that's what I'd be as concerned about the, the villages favoring church yeah it's gone. yeah and, and I try to think about lighting a village. You know, we have help from the Presbyterian Church. The Holy Family comes and does their thing. So, I, I, you know, I think it's... And so celebrate Poland is just... Uh, uh, a couple churches uh, in Poland have joined with them to help. Including this one that she's talking about. Right. And, and, like, and uh, it just strictly... Like, yeah. Strictly joining in to help. Yeah. yeah, and that's what she wanted. She wanted right. it to be a community thing, and she doesn't want it to be so much a church thing. And a lot of these hunts happen at the churches. I know I think they have one at the Methodist Church, just because maybe that's the people that organize them, or the people that are in those church communities. So they were like, to, they had all the, they, boy, she's got a budget. She did all our printing for us, she did all our banner and the whole thing. So we could. I can hardly see now. So this is all going to be on the ground yes. right here at Village yeah. Hall, and you have sufficient adults. You don't need police. No, no, no. We usually have us 15 or 20, and then they're bringing 15 or 20. So we've never had to have about part of the house. Yeah, we, we thought 15. about that, but it won't be any more, I don't think, than the lighting of the village. Okay. So um, we, we can direct people down to that lot or even um, at the... Um, Library, but I, I really don't. We we typically only have maybe 150 kids. That's still a lot. Um, I don't know if you think we need to have alert rest to that. Um, I mean, you, you the police department will want to know what's okay. going on, and there'll be an excessive okay. amount of yeah, I'll cars sure and traffic they, down here. They get a call, or yeah. we can tell them just so that they know. And, and you guys do have insurance for your organization. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's just a little bit of a, you know, just be cognizant of the fact that um, you are inviting the public here onto our grounds, and that's the highest level of um, liability that you have as an entity when you, when you are an invitee. So we have to make sure that before we go and have this, that, you know, the grounds are, are secure, just like it would be for any of those that we have. But that's as, as the uh, solicitor, that's one thing that probably be a little bit 
Yeah. I'm sorry, but we have to make sure we cover that. Yeah. Um, having all those kids right around and right. so because it's going to be might be a little bit wet still. But, um, just make sure that that we get a good walk through and everyone looks for different things that might be um, dangerous or, or potentially dangerous for kids and parents. No open holes. What about the electrical at that sign? Remember from Lighting the Village that the little spotlight on the sign on the front? No. Who did we talk to him about? You didn't ever hear about that? You did not tell you about this? No. Um, it was the police woman, that's what it was, who came out that day. There's a spotlight on that village hall sign. And as we were putting up the lights, it <coughs> kind of fell over and we went to pull it up and it started sparking and smoking. And I came in and got her, it was a Saturday, I think, or Sunday. Mm -hmm. She was in the office and she went and turned the breaker off and she said, I'll make sure Russ knows. So I think Russ knows. Actually, she got on the phone with them. Okay. So Russ knows, I don't know if anything's been done about it, but we did think about that, that if that was hot and somebody touched it and it was wet grass, that would be mm -hmm. very bad. So mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody might want to touch base with Russ check when he check. does the maintenance thing. Yeah. I, 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 I know she cut power to it for that night, but I bet that light, that sign hasn't been lit since then. I don't, I don't ever know this, but... You can just, if you can, Laurie, if you can um, either have someone send or just drop off your... your Coverage, just so I can have it. For what do you mean coverage? For the oh, the insurance coverage. Yeah. Just so I have something. Yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly. Or even put me in touch with who I can talk who, to. Okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll take care. Yeah. Of it. I mean, it's the same. The, the, the concerts would be the same. So you, it would probably be good to have that for. Mm -hmm. And I know we pay insurance every year. I'm assuming that's what it's for. I'm assuming it's a shroom to build for you. Yeah, my number and everything. Yeah, yeah, I can just text it to you. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave these for Paul. Thanks for the nice. All right, Linda, sorry to steal your thunder. Okay, um, on the agenda, we really didn't have anything else added on there. We are planning to pass this budget tonight. It's being distributed to you so that you have time to look at it before the next meeting. Um, and if there's any issues, you know, contact finance. Let's try to you know have everything prepared and ready to go for the next meeting. Will be our last meeting to meet the deadline to pass this budget. If not, we'll end up starting to have special meetings every night until we can get a quorum. Um, I, we discussed whether everybody would be able to attend the March 17th meeting, and the answer was yes. Has that changed for anybody? We want to be sure we have a quorum for this meeting. Okay. Um, two other things that we're going to are going to come out of finance tonight, which are not on this agenda, are simple motions. They won't be ordinances or resolutions, but um, we are ready to move to close that Chase account by March the 12th. That has to be closed because the Chase will no longer be covering government entities at that point. Um, and then also. Um, I'm going to ask for a motion to reimburse the Star Ohio account, <coughs> which basically, you know, I like to see everything um, completed and on record. So because it's going to involve a transaction with Star Ohio, I'd like to have that as a motion on the record to move that money back to Star Ohio that we used to set up that account, the new account. <coughs> You're confused, Joe. Are you following me? Okay, so we have set up the new account for farmers by using Star Ohio money. Now we're ready to close that Chase account down, which has now become farmers, is going to be our new depository. We did all of that by ordinance, designated the depository to be in compliance, and now we're going to move that money back because we owe that money back to Star Ohio. Six hundred thousand. Uh, Nick, do you have a number from Chase? What's left over from Chase? About uh, five hundred and ninety. Okay, so the balance of that will come from the farmer's, the farmer's account. account. Okay, and we will make that whole again for Star Ohio. And this was the possible, not possible, absolute best way to do this. And we were very fortunate that we had the money in Star that we could do it this way because you can imagine what a nightmare this would have been 
trying to balance those two accounts until we got everything cleared out of Chase. So, and you notice in <clears throat> the fiscal officer's report tonight that um, everything has cleared the Chase account. So yep. we're ready to get that money out of there and back in store. So we'll have two separate motions. One to close the Chase account by March 12th, so we're in compliance. The other one to reimburse the Start Ohio account with the full $600,000 that we took out of it in the first place. Okay, so that being said, let's talk budget. Do we have time to do this? It's fine, fine, mm -hmm. fine. If you want to just wait and do this side of time, yeah. so I don't confuse everybody. I just wait for the review. Do you have anything? Nothing. Just a, a question. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Dave's uh, request, potential request, mm -hmm. um, would that present a problem since we've already put in our requests for, for funding? Um, how soon are we looking for money for this? Pardon? For the 2016? Mm -hmm. I think it could wait till 2016, actually. Okay. Even but if we get it approved this year, they'll keep our application there. Okay. They won't make a marker until we pay for it. Okay. So, so we wouldn't be talking about this year's budget. We'd be talking about next year's budget. Is that correct? Wouldn't have to be. If we did it out of this year's budget, which we could, we'd have to store the marker until somebody pulls it. I think 2016. Yeah, I get the next year. Um, especially since this is a tight budget. Take a look at the. Um, I think that you have a copy. Nick, would you um, pass out a copy um, of the budget? Not just the budget. Um, this is the, the one that's attached to this report. Have a look at this. Have a look at how every one of these funds spent more than it received it this year. Every fund except for Windermere Lighting. Now, luckily, of course, we have carryover balance. So those funds, no fund is in the red. Okay, anyway, that's illegal for funds to go into the red. No fund is in the red. But this kind of a trend you know what happens with this kind of trend. So we, we really need to be cautious. Um, we are talking about, and I'm sure you anticipated, finance is talking about a potential levy, street levy, for this year. Because our roads, as you know, are in disrepair, and we, do not, we cannot squeeze that kind of money out of our budget. It took us almost $100,000 and 13 to do less than one mile of roadway. Um, if you're going to do that, we're looking at uh, the spring, because I don't think you want to compete with the spring. Well, that's what we just were just talking about, because yeah. we didn't anticipate what the schools were going to do. So if we, we might just try to push this yeah, for spring. November. They're planning this No, they're planning on this in November for the uh, So we're kind of thinking two mills. I'd like to hear input from the rest of the council members. Um, we're looking at two mills. Each one is going to bring in approximately $57,000. And I'm asking Russ to give us a total on how many miles of roadway, not counting state because they do their own total number of uh, miles that we have so we can kind of get an, an idea of what this rotation of paving would be like and what we could get done with that kind of money. I think about it. I was just going to push it. Yep. All right, 730, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call members. <coughs> Mr. Cassette. Here. Mr. Dunneman. Here. Attorney Limmer. Here. Mr. Major. Here. Mrs. Surrey. Here. Mrs. Yash. Here. The acceptance of the minutes from the previous council meeting. 
make a motion that we waive the reading and accept the minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Notifications of meetings and events to the public and news media. Blooper. Uh, before the next meeting at um, 6.30. Audience? Um, first meeting of the month, the Monday before. I'm sorry. Calendar. Anybody have a calendar? Should give you the date. March, you're talking. It was first Monday of April. Yeah. Crap. That would be the sixth. Yeah. April the sixth at six thirty. Okay. Legislation. Nothing scheduled. Please. Uh, we can have a meeting tonight. So not till next month. Streets. April seventeenth. March seventeenth at six o'clock. The board, ARB. We'll be meeting this Thursday, March 5th, 7 p.m., Village Hall. Planning, um, March 18th at 7 o'clock here. Board of Zoning Appeals. Nothing scheduled. Western Reserve Fire District. Uh, Western Reserve Fire District, Wednesday, March 11th at 7.30. Uh, Forest Board. What does that mean? Uh, Station 91. 91, yeah. Uh, That's next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Yeah. Um, fourth, fourth, fourth Tuesday. Okay. And High Memorial. When do we do today? March 19th, 2.30. <coughs> okay, report from Mayor. I don't have anything in writing. Uh, Jason Wilson was supposed to come tonight, and he called me last week. He has to be, he was in Columbus Day to testify or something, so he's going to try to come back on the 17th. We apologize, but I guess the Columbus is more important than us, understandably, so I'm going to give a pass. Um, last Friday, there was some training with the credit card machine. I know Paula was there. Russ and Jim Craven also sat in on it, so they were a little bit versed in what's going on. And she has processed five or six of them right now, so it's coming along. Still, it's new, so she's uh, you know, struggling a little bit, but she's getting the, the gist of it. I think she knows it's here to stay, so... Hopefully we'll get it up and rolling. How have things been going with the impound? I've come meant to ask. I don't know if we've had anyone. It's open. I don't know if there's anyone that's been in there yet that we've gotten the charge for. That was why Russ wanted to get this going. Mm -hmm. For that reason, plus the violations here, of course. And uh, another meeting, not on here, is on the Forest Board. Forest Foundation, excuse me. Has their annual meeting. It's going to be the 23rd of March at 7 p.m. You, you're on the Forest Foundation, right? Yeah. Okay. Maybe once a year as needed. And they do they do the big projects in the woods, the big capital improvement projects. So that will be on um, the twenty third. I've got a report on that on the April meeting. So that's all I have. I make a motion to accept the mayor's report. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Okay, report from fiscal officer. Okay. Um, sending around the list of bills to be paid for your signature. And following that will be the bank rec for January. It's all reconciled. Uh, this includes the Chase account, the Farmers account, and both and both Star accounts. So you can sign up on that. Um, you also have in front of you the numbers for January. Um, attached to my report is a. Um, is a um, expenditure versus revenue comparison, which was discussed earlier. Um, and like and um, like it was said, um, all funds had expenditures over and above our receipts. Um, we received two advances so far from the county auditor: one for seventeen and one for eleven thousand um, dollars. Update on the farmers. Chase accounts, um, all outstandings have cleared. Um, ACHs and EFTs are now going through farmers. There will be a motion to close the Chase account and the $600 over to farmers. $600,000 from farmers over to start. Um, and a report. Motion to accept. 
Second. Do we need to have Deputy Clerk for Nope. Okay. No report, uh, but I would accept anyone's help uh, trying to find information um, on assigning mailing addresses. If anyone has that information, maybe after meeting we'll talk about it. But other than that, I do not have a report. A what? Assigning new mailing addresses. What's that mean? Uh, someone's asking to have a new mailing address added to our village. I just thought maybe someone had some information on it. We can talk about that. Digit, when the last development was like, what, Windermere Homes. And I'm not Windermere, but Green Meadows. Green Meadows. And I remember you had to get with the post office okay. for, to get the numerals. But that's, I don't know what they'd be reassigning around here. It's a, a private residence. Okay. 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 Huh. Word from solicitor. One thing that um, that I talked to Dave about last time we were here was Mr. Eisenstein wanted a receipt um, or to understand what happened for money he allegedly gave to us for his um, application for an ease, or not easement, a, a variance. But he never gave any money. <laughs> so, so Dave you know, did research it and found nothing. So he wrote a letter, and we went over it together, uh, just giving it to Mr. Eiselstein, letting him know that there was no money deposited, therefore there was no formal denial that we have on our record, just in case he does decide to try to say that we denied it. You know, uh, we never did. <laughs> Um, that's all I have for tonight. I might have a report next time on the tree situation, but not for right now. <coughs> yeah. Motion to accept the solicitor's report. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Uh, report from Chief of Police and the Street Commission. <laughs> Um, amount of money in order to put some extra shifts on 
and some shifts where we need to have an extra person out. Uh, so we did allow uh, $10,000 for police salaries increase and um, the PRS that corresponds to that. So that's your first two items there. Went up 10000 on the uh, actual salary line item and 1400 on the PRS. Uh, zoning. Okay, so we looked at several items on zoning. We've been you know, tossing this around. Um, I would just like to tell you that I spoke with Andover, Latonia, Lowville, New Middletown, Lisbon, and McDonald. Everybody has part-time zoning administrators. Um, of all of these entities, trying to find someone who was at least as similar as we are population-wise, some commercial, at least some commercial, because commercial ties you up um, quite a bit, um, and something that was similar to Poland Village. I would say that out of all of these, Latonia was the closest. And they seem to be similar. They have a lot of historical kind of buildings that they uh, put a, a big value on. Um, their zoning administrator works eight hours a week, always. And then if there are extra things, he picks up those extra things. If there are some permits that have to be attended to or whatever. They do have some commercials there. And they are paying 10000 a year to their zoning administrator. Um, the rest are all much lower amounts. Okay, McDonald's, 5640 Andover, 4608 Lowville, um, 3000 New Middletown, approximately 1600 a year. But the thing about all of these other entities, and they all came right out and told me, they don't have commercial or much of it at all. They're mainly residential communities. I asked if they went to court often, and the answer was no. And that's where we're having a very big issue, is um, the time that you're spending in court. Okay. So anyway, finance discussed this, and we decided to come to you with a recommendation of um, raising the salary to 9500 um, One of the things Dave had asked if we would consider a phone, we decided that if we raised it to 9500 we would leave the phone up to him if he wants to choose to get an additional uh, phone just to be used for village work, he can do that. So that is our recommendation to you, and that is what we have plugged in here on zoning. That increases the salary by 1580 the PRS allowance for 220 and the Medicare for $23. Um, so I hope that you'll consider that. The other little things that you asked for, Dave, really could come out of the supply line item. That's fine. Um, unfortunately, we did not have any information or on the digital mapping, which I'm fine with what we have. Okay. Uh, I was bringing that forward from planning. Okay. So I mean, probably it. somewhere down the road, it's going to be a nice addition to the village, and it would be a good update for us to have moving forward. But in a good year and if we could try to get an idea of what this is going to cost to do this, it would be good to know that. Okay, so we'd like you to consider that. Wait, what, what state salary? <coughs> 7,920. 7, Thank you. Gotcha. Thank you. <coughs> okay, the next thing we have on here is um, a tractor was requested. We need to replace a tractor at $14,600. Okay, we are showing this not out of streets because streets has difficulty. Once again, we're back to issues of not enough revenue to cover expenses for the street fund. Okay, so we're going to do a partial appropriation for streets until revenue comes in. Yes. Um, we are expecting some increase in revenue from that curb tax that we put on last year, but we don't have numbers yet because we don't have a full year. Um, so at some point later this year, do you have any idea how soon we can anticipate that? Okay, we are going to raise our appropriations for the street fund. Okay, but right now, we're trying to plan this so that we can have general fund take care of these things. Yeah. And so we don't have to wait. So this tractor, I guess, is much needed. 
um, it is 14,600. You will see a new line item here, street repairs in the general fund. 1,623.94, machinery and equipment, okay? General fund has an allowance for just about anything that you can think of. Uh, we've never used some of these line items before, so this is a new one that you're seeing here. But this, make no mistake, this is a general fund item. It will not be a street item. Um, you recall last year we replaced a truck. We did that out of, not this one, right? We had a, we had a different one for that one as well. Uh, there was one, it was 1,623.93 okay. motor vehicle. Okay, so that's so how we, we got rid of that line item for this year, and we have the new ones in. Okay, so that's the tractor. But, excuse me. Yeah. Hey, Mark, you're on the ball with this? Yeah, I've had a lot of conversations. Okay, tell me, what, 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 what kind of a tractor? Just a uh, fur cutting lawn, a lawn tractor that does all our green, everything. Mm -hmm. A Kubota? I don't know, what what is, I think it's going to be a Kubota. I think that's what it's going to be. We have information on it. Yeah, it's, our old one, the wheels are falling off. I mean, it's just, it's done. Oh, well, that's okay. Tell me later. Okay, I'll find it for you, John. Make you no a copy. Problem. Okay. He did submit that. Okay. okay. Trade the old one in. Sell it. Sell it. <coughs> what are we buying? When? Where? Yeah, the... Oh well, forget it. Uh, we'll talk about that later. You that, want me to call my guy, Not that guy who yeah. gave us that coming no, no, no. deal. You know. We're staying far away from him. Good, good, good. Okay. Do you want Russ to come in, Joe? So no, I'll, I'll talk that. to him. It's okay. Okay. Nope. All set. Okay. Next thing: supplies and materials under street repairs. Just jump down to seven thousand nine hundred. This is seventy-five tons of salt. Actually. This number represents both the salt, the first order of salt that we got. With the 50 tons. And then an additional and then 25. And 25 tons. Okay. At 104 something a ton. And you'll recall that we talked about that at the last sure. meeting where he was going to get a good deal on sure. that from ODOT and we thought we'd better take advantage of it. Yeah, Mark, can we tell him get another 5,000 bucks for this? Yeah. Okay. So no, that's no a lot of money for salt this year. $7,900. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next you can flip the page here. Yeah. The next change, we knew this one was coming too, and that's the roof of this building. It needs to be done so we don't have more damage done. Um, and this is going to be under land and buildings, 1,730,399. We are raising this by $12,000 for, what is it, 11.5 is the roof. 11,500 is the roof. Right. Um, the electric that you asked for, Bill, possibly we're going to need back here. Mm -hmm. $1,000 was plugged in for that. And then you also asked for the Christmas uh, $1,000. So that is for the Christmas decorations. And we don't know yet what part um, for the contract. We need a contract again this year with the same gentleman, I'm assuming, for the lighting. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what the contract would be for that? I think it was eight. Is that what eight hundred? I thought it was five. Five. Five is what he quoted us. Um, I think. Remember? I don't have records. Between five and eight. Yeah. yeah. It may have gone up um, based on. I don't know what. I don't know why it would be. So. That would allow for like half and half towards the decorations and half for the contract. Um, the other thing that we were talking about is the possibility of planting a tree in the event that we lose the tree that um, we are now using for the Christmas celebration. But Anthony has also is doing some uh, negotiating for us. Possibility yeah, to find the one partly from Youngstown about taking the big tree on the corner for Youngstown Street mm -hmm. uh, for Christmas and she's going to check with the mayor and and the staff and then get back to me. So. so we know that we'll never use that tree for the Christmas decorating and um, 
Our big concern is if the one that we are using comes down in a storm or whatever, we really don't have another tree that we can use that will be sufficient to take its place. So we'd like to get a sizable tree planted and get it growing. But if we can get that one removed, because that's prime location to use right there, um, think about getting a tree maybe in the spring. So we'll keep that on the back burner. Um, jumping down to other governments. We plugged in here um, a $500 increase for the sign replacement grant. That was the village's share that we discussed at the last meeting, an increase of $500. Um, we do not yet have any numbers uh, about the possibility of uh, engineering on the sidewalk grant if we get that. My impression is zero. It's included in the grant. Okay. Covers all of the covers engineering. Right. Okay, jumping down to streets. Plow edges are needed. Uh, $2,400, so we increased 2011-624.90. Supplies of materials um, under streets. Um, and this would be the supplies and materials line item. And we are increasing up to 17300 to cover the plow edges. And... The next one down, State Highway. <coughs> Line item 2026 2399. These are uh, other contracted services. Here's where we're plugging in a controller for Johnson Place. $4,900. We increased that one by for the controller. For the high fund, we plugged in um, the exact amounts that were given to us by the high committee. And uh, Rebecca? And that covers all of the changes and all of the requests that were given to us. The replacement cruisers that you mentioned, Chris, those will be coming under law enforcement trust fund, and we did allow uh, 50000 for those two groups. We're, we're picking one within the next two months. Okay. Actually, that's, that is the least of the problems here because, you know, that money is set aside specifically for those kind of expenditures. And if we need to appropriate more, we can appropriate up to the actual amount that's in that fund. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add? Questions? Motion to accept the report. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, uh, under Mayor's office, Mayor's staff dollars, is that uh, followed? Uh, yeah. that, I believe so. Yes. 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 That's for. Paula, and that's for um, anyone who fills in when she's not here. So that's not all of her salary. That's for the subs who fill in. Uh -huh. That's total staff. Yeah, that's all staff. Uh huh. Okay, that's for the gardener at the house. For the gardener at my house. <laughs> the chauffeur. Uh, <laughs> Don't you think she should get a, a, a raise? <laughs> huh? Probably. She it's had about a, time. She yeah, had two years ago. Yeah. There aren't any That's raises in this. There aren't any raises in this budget, Joe. And actually, everybody got a raise. If you looked at the hospitalization cost amount, we picked up the difference in the raise in the raise in cost. Oh, so there is one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one raise. So, Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. We yeah. got a big one. Yeah. Take some to get yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Um, nothing important until next meeting. Streets, sidewalks, and drainage. Nothing. And blooper. Nothing. 
Reports from boards. Planning Commission. Uh, we had a planning commission that we had a guest, uh, Nathan Bevel is his name, B E V I L. Um, as he's state director of historic preservation. Um, he came to entertain questions, uh, review our uh, the draft we have of uh, historic preservation legislation. He was uh, he was pretty pleased with it, uh, but he did have some recommendations that uh, we're considering. Um, I sent him. Uh, uh, items from our present code that address uh, historic preservation. He's going to take all that information, put it together, and uh, write a report and his recommendations. For, uh, can, can, you fa can you send that to me, what you have so far? I actually was thinking about this over the weekend. I don't know why. But, you know, the way I look at it as a solicitor, and, and I think historically how it's been viewed when it's been successful is a protection of the buildings that are already established that make up the character of a building or a town. You know, before anything can be done to those those buildings, there is a committee or a group that's entrusted to make sure that they're not destroyed, they're not altered in a way that is not with the integrity of the community. Not that, that it should be a um, a homeowners association, you know, that talks about the colors of Right. Of paint and, 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 and the shrubs and the, you know certain things. So whenever it's being crafted, that's why I like to get a hold of it while it's a draft. Mm -hmm. That I'm going to look at it in terms of is it protective of what we have, but it doesn't make homeowners do things to their property that they already own. That's that's not out of the character of the village. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I'm going to look at it. So, okay. so that'd be perfect. Do you want to wait until after we get his report? Because there's going to be a significant number of changes uh, I'd like that he's to going to recommend. Do you want to see what I'd like to see it now, only because I find it easier to uh, have influence on things or to, to change things before they're set. You know, before there's a... Well, his, his report is not going to be anything set either. There's, I'm going to take his recommendations and... and yeah, uh, go from there as well. But, I, but I'll send you, I'll be glad to send you what we have. Okay, thank you. Okay. He was very good. He came, he worked in Georgia, so he has a lot of experience. And he was That's what I was talking about, Savannah. That's where I took a lot of, mm -hmm. what I learned about this was, was you know, the, the building in Savannah that was the nice hotel that was torn down before anyone could do anything about it. And that's why they came up with these ordinances, was to protect these old buildings so they're not destroyed not to make people do things to the homes they have, um, you know, that a group wants to be done. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly how I how I um, kind of interpret it in my, in my mind. He's, uh, he's been involved with many uh, communities that have uh, implemented this. And uh, actually he came that particular day because he was also uh, working with Youngstown. Youngstown is passing similar legislation. Uh, they hope to do it this year as well. So it's, uh, it's going to be uh, quite common throughout the state. Yeah. And I think to calm the fears of the folks in the community that are that are afraid of the unknown, um, you know, it's not that the village wants to control the appearance of their homes. It wants to protect what makes Poland Village Poland Village. Right. And David, I want you to know that the, this... Uh, I know it's been quite some time since uh, your committee had uh, finished their work. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but he was pleased with, he was very pleased with uh, the work that had been done. But he does have some recommendations. That we'll be yeah. We had no problem with that. Okay. And the report. <coughs> Question looks up. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Board of Zoning Appeals? Not making the report. Architecture Review Board? Nothing at this time. Forest Board. Well, the, the sort of job is finished. Mm -hmm. And they're going to come back when the weather's better and grade it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we, had, we had some talk at our last meeting about getting some Amish guys in here and maybe doing some work. Your dad would be interested in knowing that. Yeah. But... Everything is okay now. I talked to uh, Jim Bramer along those lines. Good. And I'm going to have him maybe come in um, April or May and talk about some of these ash trees that are around here, what we should be doing. So he's doing some research right now. Good. 
Good, because that's going to be a big problem. This is a guy that's a forester for Mill Creek Park. Yeah, so, good. That's all I got. Motion to approve the Forest Board report. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, Western Reserve Fire District. Um, nothing to report until our next meeting. And High Memorial, I forgot the uh, name. All right, reports from special committees. Communications from residents. They're busy taking notes, I bet. Is Dick Maris still awake back there? Good job. Uh, any new business? Uh, any old business? Okay. Motions, ordinances, resolutions. I'd like to make a motion to close the Chase Village account effective by March the 12th to be in compliance. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, I should have added to the end of that. And deposit the balance in a farmer's account. That's six hundred thousand dollars. Close to it, Judge. Five hundred and second as amended. Second as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Other motions, ordinances, resolutions? I'd like to make a motion to reimburse the Star Ohio account in the amount of six hundred thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any other motions, ordinances, or resolutions? Are you ready to move on the budget? Or we can do this two ways. We can wait so you can look at it some more, or we can pass it. I'm good with it. I'm good. You need more time, Joe? I would like to study. Okay, that's fine. That's the reason that we gave you time. Just, just, two weeks. just keep in mind there's a risk that. We don't have a quorum at the next meeting. It could be an issue. Why won't we have a quorum? Something could happen. I could be gone, you could be gone. Who knows? You just need four for a quorum, right? We need four for a quorum. But, but we can uh, also we want, okay. pass the special. Well, I was involved in getting it, so I'm. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I know it. I know it. I think it's pretty solid. So, Chris, pretty solid. I'm fine with it. Okay, everybody's in favor of it. Okay. Go with it. Yeah. Are you sure? Because we're not. Yeah. Try I'm not trying to rush it. Keep going. And that was that's, that's that was the okay. point. Keep, of keep going. Keep going. It's okay. It's okay. You're sure? So we're doing it now. Okay. Yeah. Do it now. The only thing I would like to, if, if uh, all right. Paul has got a raise. Now we gave Dave a raise, and Paul has taken on a lot of work. Actually, the only thing she's taken on new is the way it's processing and by using yeah, um, a charge a instead. For, uh, da for Dave, he's actually ended up in the courtroom a large number of hours that no other zoning administrator has done in the 25 years uh, I've sat at this table. But, but Dave, we got two big jobs, right? <coughs> Arnheiser and... Uh, Oh, what's the other one? That's all I got. You spend all, all the time over there for those two guys. But I, I think the day to day, I think the day to day uh, uh, work that's been done at the, uh, for zoning in Poland has been increased quite a bit. That's oh, true. Yeah, no doubt about it. So it's uh, not to disparage any previous people or anything like that, but I think I think we've got to step up. And I think, too, that, you know, the fact that we didn't just assign a number, we did our homework here to make sure that we are not way out of line with what other villages are paying. Um, you know, I'm not the kind of person that likes to do this. I like to see this. I like to see documentation of what other people are doing and be sure that we're doing something fair. Personally, I would hate to see us lose this gentleman and the hard work that he has done. Oh, Dave. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. And have to start over again. No, no problem. You know, and so somehow we I have to compensate that. him for the time that he's putting in. But I think that Paula is doing more than she has done in the past. Am I right, Kim? Yeah, she's busy. She's busy all the time. Joe, I don't want to take anything away from you, but 
you know, we requested everybody to put it in requests. Yeah. And we didn't hear anything of that. Uh, yeah, I know. See, so okay. it's... Yeah. I mean, I appreciate what you're saying, and hopefully we'll be able to help her out later on. Can I ask this question? If the passage of the budget tonight, does it preclude if the council wishes at some point during the year to give Paul a stipend of some sort, that would be... Thank you. Absolutely. So you're not being locked out. You're not being locked out. Right. Yeah. We okay. Can do that. I just want to make a point. Okay. Also. Okay. okay. Point made. Point made. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. I'm in favor. Okay, let's okay. go. Let's go. <laughs> then we're all set then. Yeah, we're all okay. set next week. We're all set next week. Same back for I'd like to make a motion for an ordinance to set the 2015 budget and waive the three readings to pass by emergency. Second. 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 Roll call. Mr. Cassette? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Attorney Limmer? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mrs. Cernan? Yes. Mrs. Yao? Yes. A motion for an ordinance to make permanent appropriations for the current expenses and other expenditures of the Village of Poland, County of Mahoning, State of Ohio, during the year 2015 and declaring an emergency. Second. Roll call. Mr. Cassette? Yes. Mr. Dunneman? Yes. Attorney Limmer? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mrs. Cernick? Yes. Mrs. Yeah. Yes. Any other motions, ordinances, or resolutions? <coughs> Second and third readings. Presentation of the bills. Make a motion that the bills be paid. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, questions from the news media. Remarks by council. Mr. Sir. I'd just like to thank everybody for um, their work on the budget and um, be hopeful that uh, our revenues increase this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Limmer? Oh, I want to thank Linda for all the work she did as chair of the committee. Yeah. I'll get up. Mr. Cassette? Same. Mr. Dunneman? Yeah, thanks for the Finance Committee and especially Linda. And also, I want to congratulate the uh, basketball teams this year. A great job, and good luck in the tournament that's coming up. Mr. Major. I appreciate what everybody did, because I was there in the past. Mark, you're on the assignment. Bob? Yeah. And Linda. Okay. Good job, guys. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting, 809. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We need to adjourn. Two things. Yeah,